Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the all-new completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Welcome to Rogers Center. It is an open-air ball game tonight. Don Mattingly and the Los Angeles Dodgers are in town. Dodgers at Rogers Center for the first time since 2007. And right now, the Dodgers are red hot, 50 and 47, just a half game back in the NL West. Now it's time for a preview of what's coming up with Quaker State Real Durable Oil. The Dodgers have a red-hot lineup. They just swept the Nationals a three-game series in Washington. Carl Crawford, Yosiel Puig, Adrian Gonzalez, and Hanley Ramirez. And he has been the guy that has really sparked them in this turnaround. He's got nine RBIs in nine career games against the Blue Jays. He's anxious to continue swinging a red-hot bat. Andre Ethier is the DH tonight. And against Josh Johnson, the two former National Lakers have met up in the past. And Ethier is 8 for 15 with a pair of doubles and three RBIs against the big right-hander. And Josh Johnson looking for his second win of the season. Making his 13th start of the year, eighth career start against the Dodgers. Josh pitched the final game before the Jays right before the All-Star break. That was against the Baltimore Orioles. And he gave up a season-high seven earned runs. Big problem in that game was trying to keep the ball in the ballpark. A couple of home runs by Chris Davis and Adam Jones did him in for his career. Three and two in those seven starts versus the Dodgers. And the Dodgers hitting 325 against Josh Johnson in those seven starts. Defensively for the Jays, it's Cabrera Raspis and Bautista from left to right in the outfield. Mark DeRosa gets the start with the left-hander on the mound for L.A. Reyes and Lori up the middle end at first and J.P. Aaron Sebia is behind the plate for Josh Johnson. And Mark DeRosa will get the start at third, his 15th start over there at third base. And what does that do? Pushes Brett Laurie back to second base. Made four starts at second. He was at third yesterday, back at second tonight. Here's the first pitch of the ball game up and into Carl Crawford, and we are underway. Carl Crawford came to the Dodgers after that Boston trade. Signed with the Red Sox as a free agent and was traded here to L.A. And Carl Crawford was talking before the game about how much he enjoyed hitting in this ballpark and why not. Picked up his first big league hit right here at Rogers Center. He and about, I don't know how many other people enjoy hitting in this ballpark. <laughs> I mean, it's just been a great hitter's ballpark the last few years. Carl Crawford spent nine seasons with the Tampa Bay Rays. Two balls and two strikes. Well, one thing that Josh Johnson's going to have to do tonight, I was talking to J.P. Aaron Seabee before the game. He said they have to pitch this team inside. They are hot. The Los Angeles Dodgers, they're going to have to pound these guys in. They like the ball away from them. Bouncing ball toward first. Lynn right at the bag. Steps on first, and Crawford is retired. Time now for the scouting report brought to you by TD Bank, proud sponsor of your Toronto Blue Jays. The scouting report for Josh Johnson is the off-speed pitch from June 4th through to July 9th, just 233. And that start July the 14th, the Oakland, or excuse me, the Baltimore Orioles hit 375 against Josh Johnson. What he is trying to do now is throw a split change up and trying to tighten up his slider just a little bit. Both Josh Johnson and Pete Walker felt like they were showing his breaking ball too much to the hitter. It was too big. Yasiel Puig, the 22-year-old outfielder, swings at that inside pitch. And there's what you're talking about. A couple of pitches inside, and Josh Johnson is quickly ahead 0-2. And Puig's problem has he's been swinging at everything. Lots of strikeouts. But I think that Josh Johnson has really put himself into a box by working just the outer half and looks like he is anxious to establish that inside pitch breaking ball and Puig lays off two and two Yasiel Puig currently 0 for 9 and boy did he have a great first month of his big league career 44 hits in his first big league month reaches for it outside and Puig can run but Johnson is there to take the pass from him two outs that hole at that was set up by those first three pitches on the inner half to Puig. 
So with two outs, this is the way you want to face Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez has always hit well here at Rancho Center, and this is a hitter's ballpark to be sure, and he's a very good hitter. A 294 career average, and he's hit 361 in 15 games with six homers in this ballpark. And he's hit a lot of balls the other way when he is with the Boston Red Sox, really driving the ball out of the ballpark, which is one of his strengths. Gonzalez right at 300 for the season. He's running a mini four-game hit streak. Pops this one back into the seats out of play. Adrian Gonzalez, a first overall pick in 2000 by the Florida Marlins. He is just the second first baseman to ever be picked first overall. Ball on a strike. Cut on and missed. Mm. I see the wheels spinning over there, Mr. Tavern. Yeah, who's the other first baseman pick number one, right? Give me a year. 1967. That's a little bit before my time. Ron Bloomberg. Right on the money. Well done. <laughs> one and two. Up and away. It's two and two. Ron Bloomberg in 1967 was the only other first baseman picked first overall. New York Yankees first DH six years later. 2-2 pitch to Gonzalez. Change up and he got him. That might have been that splitter, the new wrinkle that Josh Johnson has added. The Dodgers are done quickly in the first of the Reyes Bautista in Conachon when we come back. Tampa Bay, and they were swept in the three game series. Let's take a look at the lineup. Top of the order, Jose Reyes, the former National Leaguer. It's a 300 average against the Dodgers. Six home runs and 20 RBIs. And then Bautista Encarnacion. Been a terrific hitter in interleague play. He's got 21 career home runs and 50 RBIs in 85 interleague games. And he will look to continue to be productive against the Dodgers. The Dodgers gave Hung Jin Ryu. A little extra time off as you see they love him here he went out to warm up before tonight's game and got a standing ovation but they they gave Ryu an extended break pushing him back of the rotation following the all-star break he hasn't pitched since July the 10th that was in Arizona probably his worst start of the year and it was only the second time in 18 starts that Ryu had failed to go at least six innings Ryu is set, and Reyes is in the box, takes strike one. Ryu is 26 years old, facing the Blue Jays for the first time. His first year in the major leagues. The curveball is bounced in the dirt. Ball on the strike to Reyes. Ryu was a seven-time all-star in the Korean Professional Baseball Organization. A two-time gold glove winner pretty athletic man for a big man and he got off to a great start when he came over here through a lot of strikes I don't know if he just got tired or the batters were starting to get a little bit familiar with him but he's basically fastball curveball changeup breaking ball bounce to Hanley Ramirez it's short near the bag and Reyes is retired one down. 
The Dodgers have always been known for their defense, and this year it hasn't been very good. They've committed 68 errors. Only the Nationals and Brewers have made more. It's Carl Crawford, Yasiel Puig, and Skip Shoemaker in the outfield. Tommy Uribe, Hanley Ramirez up the middle. Mark Ellis, his double play combination. The gold glover at first is Adrian Gonzalez and A.J. Ellis, a terrific defender behind the plate for Ryu. And Ryu likes to work quickly. That is Yasiel Puig in center field. Matt Kemp was injured in yesterday's game in Washington. So Puig gets just his second start in center field. Puig has started 36 games in right field. And he has taken over for Kemp in center. Jose Bautista. Change up in there and... Ryu has the ability to throw any of his pitches anytime. Yeah, I like the pace that he's working at right now. This is a little like Mark Burley. Get it and go. Don Mattingly, Ryu's manager, compared Ryu to David Wells. Wells, big Burley guy like Ryu, but a smooth delivery. And Mattingly knows Wells very well. This is popped up toward the seats, and that'll get back out of play. Full count, one out. Off the end of the bat, that's queued up the first baseline. Ryu flips it to Gonzalez, who takes it barehanded. Another good sign of the athleticism of Ryu. He got off the mound, and he was indecisive as to who was going to take that ball, but he stayed with it. Well, you were all over that about him being athletic. See a little flip and then the catch with the bare head. 6'1", 220 he is listed at. He got off the mound and shuffled over there quickly. Flip the ball with his glove and watch Gonzalez, the gold glover, just grab it with the bare hand to get Bautista. That's one thing that the right-handers are going to have to be wary of. He throws a lot of change-ups to him. Adrian Gonzalez is a three-time gold glover at first base. And we mentioned Ryu has won two gold gloves in Korea. So two outs now for Edwin Encarnacion. He rips his first pitch in the left field. Carl Crawford gets over and cuts it off. Crawford with great speed saves extra bases for Ryu. Jumped all over that first fastball. Let's take a look at that scouting report for Ryu. Fastball 55% of the time. It's 88 to 92 miles an hour. He's got to change the curve in the slider. Slider is solid when he uses it properly. Changeup is very good. He'll throw the changeup to the right-handers and he'll throw the breaking ball to the left-handers. Compliment that fastball. That time, Encarnacion said, I'm not going to wait around until it gets to two strikes. He's going to throw me that change. Adam Lynn tonight at first base. Takes the first pitch to strike. Lind for the season just over 300 at 303. He's done a good job against lefty pitching this year. He's hit 286 against Southpaws. We always talk about pitchers and their tempo and how that keeps the infielders engaged, and that's the case with Ryu. Yeah, he doesn't stray too far from that pitching rubber, does he? Rosa gets it back from A.J. Ellis, the catcher, and he's ready to go once again. Ball on a strike. Upstairs and away. The Dodgers, they have their sights set on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Trail the Diamondbacks just by a half a game. They're even in the loss column. They both lost 47 games. The Diamondbacks have one more win. The middle base hit, and Conacion will stop at second. Puig's got a cannon for an arm, and he gets it back to the infield quickly. And he loves to show it off, too, because he's got a good one. Charges the ball very quickly. Cuts that ball off when it got by Ellis, the second baseman. Looked like he had a chance to split the outfield. But Puig comes hard charging, and he comes up throwing. 
Right to the cutoff man. Encarnacion can't advance. So back to back two out singles and we're using a bit of a jam early. Now Pete Cabrera the switch hitter batting right against Ryu. Cabrera, a 281 lifetime hitter against the Dodgers. Of course, last year he got a taste of that West Coast rivalry when he played for the Giants. Ryu can pitch. He's in his first big league season, obviously a rookie, but spent seven years playing professional baseball in Korea. And he knows how to pitch, and he's had a lot of international exposure as well. You mentioned how Don Mattingly says he reminds him of David Wells, not just the way he looks and that he's left-handed, but he could pitch. He's not a thrower. He says he can go both sides of the plate. He pitches inside, up and down, and uses his changeup. And he calls it the art of pitching, not just trying to light up the radar gun. And he knows a little something about trying to hit people like that. Two and one popped in the air on the right side. Gonzalez will watch it sail into the seats out of play. Well, this is an area where the Blue Jays really need to change their fortunes against the Tampa Bay Rays over the weekend series. They were four for 27 with runners in scoring position. As a club, they hit 148. There's too many opportunities to cash in, and in that series, they lost two one run games. Left 27 runners on base. In that series also against Tampa. And I think it's just a mindset right now for a lot of the Blue Jays. Just go up there and have one thought right now. Just one positive thought. The pressure is on the pitcher to come to you. Robert covers that outside pitch and fouls it into the seats. Well, that's a good idea, too. And everybody on the club knows they're struggling to come up with clutch hits, but... Instead of going there thinking I got to get a hit. You just have a positive mindset. Yeah, just one thing too. your mind can get so cloudy when you're thinking of too many things and the situations and things like that. Just one positive thought. Bouncing ball foul at third. Okay. Got the bouncing ball in foul territory. Clear your mind and we talk about it all the time. The best thought process for a hitter is to get a good pitch to hit. Now with two strikes, Cabrera has to take an additional step of expanding his strike zone a bit. And it looks like he's trying to keep the ball away. He's just showing him the ball inside. You see a couple of pitches inside, but pretty much staying away from Melky. Pretty animated crowd early on. There is a huge contingent of Dodger fans down the right field foul line. Cabrera stays alive. They are Dodger fans, and we get a sense that there's a lot of South Koreans there that are here who watch Ryu pitch. Walked right in front of him on his way down to the bullpen to get ready, and they were giving him a standing ovation. And I think the Blue Jay fans are saying, not in our house. <laughs> Here's another 2-2 two -two to Cabrera. He stays alive. Look at all the pitches that are bunched off the plate outside. And another good indication about Ryu's experience. He hasn't left anything over the heart of the plate. Yep, just showed him a couple pitches on the inner half just to keep Melky Cabrera a little honest. And then his, look at the cluster on the outside part of the plate and up. Quite a battle going on here. That's the ninth pitch of the advantage. Twenty-six year old Hunjin Ryu making his first career start against the Blue Jays. Cabrera hits it on the ground. Mark Ellis throws him out at first. And Ryu gets out of a first inning jam. Couple of two out singles and nothing more. It's scoreless after one at Rogers Center.
It's at the Toronto Fire Hall, number 133. That's 1505 Lawrence Avenue West. JB will assist Toronto firefighters in distributing two sets of Blue Jays baseball cards to kids 14 and under. Ace the mascot of the Blue Jays games will also be set up for children to enjoy. So remember, Wednesday, July 24th at Fire Hall number 133. So Blue Jays have their hands full now with Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez is red hot. Hitting everything right now since he came back off the VL. Look at those numbers 393, former batting champ. When you think about the Dodgers' hot streak, it's coincidental with the promotion of Yasiel Quig and the activation of Ramirez off the DL. And their numbers are frighteningly similar. We came up the first uh, week of June. Ramirez came right off the DL the day after him. And look at those numbers. Tom Mattingly talks about that. Those two players and then Gonzalez and Kemp. And he wants those four guys in that lineup. He knows they're going to be pretty good offensively. Well, when you talk to the Dodgers about Hanley Ramirez, they have nothing but high praise for Ramirez. He came last year in the middle of the season from the Miami Marlins and he played great down the stretch this year he came out of spring training swinging the bat well went to WBC got hurt Yasiel Puig just 22 years old was promoted to the major leagues for the first time on the 3rd of June Johnson strikes out Hanley Ramirez his second strike out of the night slider a little bit tighter it looks like a fastball and then you can see just a little movement off the hitting plane before that breaking ball swept just a little too much and it gave too much information to those hitters that was a pretty good combination right there from Josh Johnson Andre Ethier is the batter he's the DH tonight Ethier hitting 264 for the season goes after the first pitch and drills it to center that ball's going to get down and bounce over the wall for a ground pool double. He told you, Ethier loves to hit against Josh Johnson. He didn't waste any time at all. Jumped on the first pitch. That's his ninth career hit against Josh Johnson. Looked like a fastball. And uh, J. Pierre and Sebia setting up. Outside the ball came a little bit too much inside and Ethier with that nice stroke right there. That's a short stroke. Picks up the double. 19th double of the season for the Dodgers DH. Ethier now nine for 16 against Josh Johnson. AJ Ellis, the catcher, takes a pitch outside. Ellis done a good job behind the plate. He's a guy that was a four-year college player before he was drafted. An 18th round pick in 2003. He's 32 years old. Didn't get a chance to come to the big leagues until late. This is his first full season. He's very patient at the plate. He's among the leaders in pitches seen for plate appearance. And now Johnson has fallen behind 3 and 0. You know, in an ideal guy then to bat sixth when you see a lot of pitches, you're very patient. 30 walks and 51 strikeouts. Dennis has really become a rock solid catcher and leader behind the plate. Skip Schumacher. Schumacher is the right fielder tonight. Ball is drilled to center field, and Rasmus is going to watch it sail into the seats. Home run, A.J. Ellis. His fifth of the season, and the Dodgers continue to swing red hot bats. This time it's A.J. Ellis, the catcher. He got himself into a good 
fastball count at three and one, and Josh Johnson missed his spot. Watch AJ, or excuse me, J. Pierre and Sebia move to the inside. He just can't get it in there. That ball is out over the plate. He wanted it in. He tried to jam him, tie him up, and it just didn't get there. Full extension to right field. Skip Shoemaker starting in right field. He's in his ninth big league season, his first with the Dodgers. A.J. Ellis talking to Mark Ellis about what he saw from Josh Johnson. As a line drive loved by Adam Lynn. That's the second out of the inning. You know, that was a good pitch to Schumacher right there. He jammed it in there. And we saw that the pitch to Ellis was supposed to be a fastball on the inside part of the plate. He missed it. I, I, I hope that Josh says and JP say, you know what? We just missed our spot. We have to continue to pound inside to these guys, especially these right handers. Juan Uribe goes after that first pitch breaking ball. Uribe, the veteran, he's 34 years old. He's in his 13th major league season. Started out with the Colorado Rockies way back in 2001. He's played for the White Sox, the Giants, and now the Dodgers as well. That got an awful lot of bat. Uribe trying to sell it that it might have hit his hand, but you could hear the bat hand on the umpire behind home plate, Dan Bellino. Empire, did he call hit by pitch? It certainly yeah. sounded like it got a lot of the bat. Right now, <laughs> Uribe saying that was my wrist. So I'm manningly out to take a look at his starting third baseman. Johnson trying to run that ball inside and hit for Uribe. He will be awarded first base. One more time, fastball with a little sink to it. It looked like it got him right on the hand. So Uribe will go to first base with two outs. That'll bring the number nine hitter, Mark Ellis, to the plate. The Dodgers have taken a 2 nothing lead on a two-run home run by the catcher, A.J. Ellis. Mark Ellis, the second baseman. He's now 36 years old. This is his second year with the Dodgers. Cut. He fouls it back. Yeah, Mark Ellis is a baseball player. He doesn't wow you with a lot of statistics, but he's always in the right place. Great fielding second baseman. He could do some things offensively to help you. And that's how you stick around for as long as he has. Just a good baseball player. There's strike two on the outside corner. Job by Aaron Sebia on keeping that ball in front of him and breaking ball in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. We're in the top half of the second inning, and the Dodgers have taken a two nothing lead. They just swept the Nationals in Washington for the first time since that franchise moved to D.C. A three game sweep. They've been hot. They have won how many series in a row now? Nine. Ellis pokes it into right field. That'll get down for a base hit. Uribe stops at second base. That's the third hit of the inning. You know, you might say, well, what a lucky hit right there. But this is by design. Two strikes. I'm protecting the plate. I'm going to cut my swing down. And he's rewarded with a base hit as he dumps it into right field. That shows you how long he's been around the game and how to 
handle those two strike approaches. First and second, back to the top of the order, call Crawford. Takes the first pitch strike. Crawford bounced out to first in the first inning. You know, that wasn't a bad pitch. No, it was a good pitch. Good pitch. Got tip your cap once in a while. I mean, the guy in the batter's box is paid to do a job, too. Carl Crawford is the active leader in triples in the major leagues. He has 116 career triples. Jose Reyes is right behind him with 111. Two of the real speed merchants in the game in this ball game tonight. All the time that Carl has missed over the last couple of years, I would have thought Reyes would have been the guy. There's a base hit up the middle. Uribe coming around third. Rasmus has got a great shot to throw him out. The throw is offline, and Uribe scores. Uribe had just touched third base when Rasmus got that ball, but the throw was up the third baseline. Ball hit hard enough by Carl Crawford, and the Blue Jays positioned in the right spot to certainly get Juan Uribe with a good throw. Hit to the glove side of Colby Rasmus. Watch the runner with two, two outs. He's heading home. It's hit to the glove side. Charging. Comes up and throws way offline. Really no chance for J.P. and Sevia to get the runner. And it looks like it will probably go as an error also as the runner at second base. Ellis had stopped. But when the, that throw got away from Aaron Sevia, he moved over to third. So it is a hit in the air. Carl Crawford picks up the RBI, his 15th of the season, a two-out base hit. And it's now 3-0 L.A. Yasiel Puig grounded out to first base, his first time up. Bouncing ball, base hit up the middle. Ellis is in to score. It's a four-run inning. Boy, what changed from the first inning to the second inning for Josh Johnson? Well, the first four batters. Remember, he started Ramirez off this inning with a strikeout. Pounded fastballs in, threw him a slider, struck him out. Then Ethier hit a fastball for a double. And then the fastball in the inside part that was supposed to be there stayed outside. Ellis Homer and doesn't look like they're pounding him inside anymore. Now you got to deal with Adrian Gonzalez. Great speed on the base as Crawford at second, Puig at first. And we mentioned how well Gonzalez has hit in this ballpark in the past. Got to really bunch him in the outfield. I think like the Blue Jays are doing, bunch him on the infield. He hits the ball wherever it's pitched. Gonzalez, in his 15 previous games at Rogers Center, has 19 RBIs. And you're right. He is not looking to pull the ball. He'll take what you give him. If you stay out there, he's going to try and hit the ball in the left center field. Try to come in, he'll pull it. We're staying away from him again. Gonzalez is the ninth Dodger to bat here in the second. Three and zero. A four pitch walk that'll load the bases. Well, the first inning, wham, one, two, three. And then now John Gibbons has to get on the phone here in the second. And this has been what's been happening to the Blue Jays here in the second half. And it seems as though it was one pitch that changed Johnson's confidence level. The double given up by to Andre Ethier with one out in the second. And that's where we are now. Two outs in the second inning. Bases are loaded for Hanley Ramirez. He started the inning by striking out. Big numbers for Ramirez, mind you, in limited at bats. He hurt his thumb during the World Baseball Classic, diving for a ball. This is 
Just the 43rd game of the season for Ramirez. He gets jammed and fouls it go. off his foot. Well, Ramirez is in some pain at home plate, and the trainer for the Dodgers is Sue Falsoni. And she's been out twice during this game already. This inning. Two outs, and Uribe got hit with that pitch on the wrist. Now, right off the left knee from Hanley Ramirez. The inside of that left knee, and but when you're swinging the bat as well as he <laughs> is right now, tell the trainer go back to the dugout. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to finish this at bat. The yeah. bases are loaded. I need some ribbies. Ball on the strike. Four runs in this inning. Did he check? Yes, according to the first base umpire, Mike Everett. Another pitch inside, another foul off Ramirez. This one may yeah. have gotten his foot this Why time. Even go away. When, when you've seen a batter hit a couple of balls like that, it looked like a two seamer, took a little something off of it. High leg kick, this one right off the shin for Ramirez. He's going to need a whole tub of ice after this game. And you can see he's got a protective pad over the instep of that left foot. And as often is the case, you foul the ball down there and it hits everything but the pad. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm Josh Johnson, I'm coming right back inside again. Yeah, you might lock him up. He might not want to swing. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And there's not quite set just yet. It was one big inning for Josh Johnson his last time out. Four runs in the first inning against the Orioles. And now it's this inning. Bouncing ball. Reyes hits short. Goes to second for the force out. The inning is over. But the Dodgers send ten men to the plate. Score four runs on five hits to take a four-nothing lead. Radio Primetime Sports with Bob McCowan every weekday on Sportsnet 590. The fan. P.K. Subban, the Norris Trophy winner from the Montreal Canadiens in attendance tonight. Great time for hockey players to kick back and relax and recharge batteries. But before you know it, they'll be back on the ice. Mark DeRosa takes the first pitch strike. 
Hun Jin Ryu with a 4 nothing lead. Well, this Dodger team, we talked about it. What a potent offense they have recently. They have the best batting average in the month of July. Coming into this game, batting 289 as a team. And they're great, getting great pitching also in the month of July. U.S. runs allowed per game in the month of July since 1969. They have the fourth best. Just over two runs a game. Barossa singles into left field. Comes on a one-two pitch, and he's the boy. So Mark Barossa starts things off in the second. He could still hit that inside heater right there. They went away, change up, and then tried to bust him inside again. Barossa was waiting for him. The Dodgers have been as hot as Tampa Bay. They are tied with identical records for the last 25 games. They've both gone 20 and 5 over that stretch. Kobe Rasmus, the center fielder, takes one outside. Pulls this pitch foul outside of first. You know, you look at Rasmus' career numbers against the Dodgers. He's got a 209 average, but that's not unusual. I mean, this goes on for years. You look at the Dodgers and the opponent's batting average of people that have to face them. They're never too good. Dodgers have always had great pitching. Built on great pitching for decades. This organization's been there, and they pitch in a great pitcher's ballpark. Dodgers Stadium has always been known as. A pitcher's ballpark, and now they have the likes of Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke to that's, go along with Ryu. That's one thing that the Blue Jays caught a break. They don't get either one of those pitchers in this series. Zach Greinke is five and zero oh over his last six starts. Clayton Kershaw won his ninth game yesterday. He leads the National League in ERA. And two terrific pitchers, and Kershaw's just getting his feet on the ground in the big yeah. leagues. It was good yesterday. In Washington. One and two to Rasmus off the plate outside. The Dodgers starters have the third lowest ERA in the major leagues, 339 collectively. The Pittsburgh Pirates, then the St. Louis Cardinals, followed by the Dodgers. Rick Honeycutt, the longtime pitching coach, certainly has a good crew to work with. Honeycutt, in its eighth year as the pitching coach, has always had a lot of good arms, but he knows how to develop them. Yeah. You can have great arms, but you've got to get people out, and that's what the Dodgers do. They always have. Full count to Rasmus. And high into center field. Quig has plenty of room. Over in the alley makes the catch and Rasmus is retired. Well, they're making him throw pitches. 25 pitches in the first inning, 11 more so far here in the second inning. And he has thrown at least 100 pitches, 11 consecutive starts. Yeah, he's got a big, strong body, and you know that he could give you a lot of deep ball games. As you mentioned, he hasn't pitched since the 10th of July, so he's well rested. They had to give him a little bit of a blow. Most consecutive starts throwing 100 plus pitches. Only Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander have had more than Ryu. J.P. Aaron Sebia. Went around on that breaking ball. That ball hit the plate and he chased it. It's an 0 2 count on Aaron Sebia. And CB arguing he got a piece of it. The home plate umpire Dan Bellino said no deal. And Aaron CB strikes out. That's the second out of the inning. 
Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, email asktheexperts at sportsnet.ca. And keep your eye out for the home hardware Ask the Experts segment later on in the game. That's the first strikeout for Ryu tonight. Craig, he threw a couple of curveballs to Aaron Sevia. First one bounced. Yeah, really expanded the strike zone on him. Brett Laurie goes after the first pitch, taken on one hop by Hanley Ramirez. They go to second to end the inning. So Mark DeRosa gets the leadoff single. Blue Jays can't do anything more against Ryu. The Dodgers have a 4 nothing lead. engineer 2014 Acura MDX the luxury SUV redefined experience it now at your local Acura dealer welcome back to Toronto Rogers Center is open on an overcast evening it's very comfortable here at the Rogers Center 23 degrees at the start of this ball game the Dodgers are comfortable so far they have four runs on five hits and this is the guy that got it all started Andre Ethier with a one out double in the second open up the floodgates. Hey. Ethier in his eighth season with the Dodgers. He was originally a second round pick of the Athletics in 2003. He came to the Dodgers. In December of 2005, in a deal that included Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley went from LA to Oakland, and Andre Ether is thrilled that he ended up with the Dodgers. Yeah, and he has hit ever since coming over here. He's a two time All Star, won a gold glove in 2011. He wore out right handed pitchers last year in the National League. In fact, he was the best against right handed pitching last year, hitting 325. You can see how patient he is at the plate. Well, he's had such good success against Johnson. He is now 9 for 16. And it's almost like he's in Johnson's head. I don't see him offering it any borderline pitches. Full count. Hits this ball hard down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Bautista plays it well. He's got a strong arm. Here's the throw to second. Not in time. Andre Ethier with his second double of the game. Man in second. Nobody out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell.
Well, there's been a lot of speculation about the Rangers Cubs making a deal. A couple of days ago, they said the deal had fallen through, and now the deal is done. Garza will go to the Texas Rangers. Key part to that trade, Mike Olt, the young outfielder who has bounced back between infield and outfield, and Jason Grimm, Justin Grimm, Justin Grimm right handed pitcher, yep. and another minor league pitcher, plus a player to be named later. Cubs in full rebuilding mode now. It's the second veteran starter that they've traded away. Scott Feldman went to the Orioles, and the next shoe to drop, maybe Alfonso Soriano. It is on the trade deadline approaching July 31st, the non waiver trade deadline period. AJ Ellis hit a two run home run to dead center his last time up. Has a strike up and away. It's two balls and two strikes. Josh Johnson retired the first four hitters he faced here tonight. A couple of easy ground outs and two strikeouts, and then Ethier started the hit parade with a ground rule double. Well, he almost got sawed off on an inside pitch. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Right there when you jam a guy like that, you just can't get it started. Looking for the breaking ball, he crosses him up and he just can't get that bat hit out there. Another pitch inside and Ellis was tied up. Well, talk about the mindset of a hitter with two strikes. What are you trying to do at the plate with two strikes? Well, first of all, I think plate coverage, because you don't want to get called out on strikes. So you're thinking about plate coverage. Then you're thinking about, well, the pitcher, right-hander, he might be trying to go breaking ball away to try and strike me out. I, I'll be looking out there. So when you bust him in like that. Bouncing ball up the middle. It's a base hit. Ethier was about ready to stop at third, and he comes in to score without a throw. Ethier assumed the ball was going to be caught by Reyes. It was a ground ball over the mound. A.J. Ellis picks up his third RBI of the game. You know, finishing the thought, you go in there, you tie him up, then you throw a breaking ball. That's what good major league hitters do. They cover the plate. They cover the two-strike breaking ball. Here's what you were talking about, Ethier. He thought that that ball was going to be caught by Reyes, actually slowed down a little bit, then was waved home by Wallach. Tim Wallach, the third base coach, and there wasn't even a throw from the outfield. You would think the Dodgers would have learned from yesterday's game and Matt Kemp's injury at home plate not to assume anything on the bases. Yeah. Bases loaded, a little tapper up the right side, and he didn't run when the ball was hit, and I think it cost him. Got injured on the play. Skip Shoemaker, the right fielder, takes one just outside. Ball on the strike. Yeah, Matt Kemp was jogging in, assuming it was going to be a routine out at first base. And he said after the game, it was his mistake. He should have been running. He cost Carl Crawford a hit. He was apologetic to Crawford. And an RBI. Does that ball... Hits by Aaron Sebia back to the the backstop. This is what we were talking about. Bases loaded. A little number up the middle. Watch the first baseman. He's thinking about first. Oh, I got a shot at the plate. And Matt Kemp, who's at third, just jogging in, assuming the ball is going to be played at first, realizes there's a plate to play and got injured because of that. Had to leave the ball game and is not in the lineup tonight. Now, every time you assume something's going to happen, it'll come back and bite you. Josh Johnson is charged with a wild pitch on that ball that went through the legs of J.P. Aaron Sevia, then allowed A.J. Ellis to move up to second base. 
ball was in the dirt, but certainly a ball that could have been blocked by Aaron Sebia. Went right through his legs back to the backstop. A chance for a double play now. And a chance for the Dodgers to move another runner up. This one is blocked by Aaron Sebia, and Ellis at second has to stay put. Well, you talk about the Dodgers, and we compare them to Tampa Bay, two of the hottest teams in baseball. And when you're on a win streak like this, and you do something to have a good team at bat, like move the runner up, it's evident. Everybody understands what you're doing, what you've accomplished. And this is a team that has first place in their sights. Yeah, you just feed off of that. Look at that. What a job, and it's catcher's <laughs> interference on Aaron Sebia. Aaron Sebia reached in, and Shoemaker hit his glove. And Aaron Sebia is arguing the point, and you can see his glove got knocked off. Watch the swing. Aaron Sebia reaches out, and the glove is knocked off. And Schumacher will be awarded first base. That's catcher's interference. I, I don't know what the argument can be right there. And one way or another, it's going to cost Josh Johnson. He's going to be leaving the ball game. Aaron Luke comes in. A very shaky start for the Blue Jays. In every aspect, they trail Dodgers 5-0. Time the first four batters he faced tonight and struck out Adrian Gonzalez and Henry Ramirez. But then Andre Ether hit a one out double. AJ Ellis followed that with a two run home run, and it was just another rough start for Josh Johnson. Aaron Loop will come out of the bullpen with nobody out and runners at first and second. And now John Givens has got to piece this together to finish it off. Two plus innings for Josh Johnson. Aaron Loop can throw multiple innings. He has done that this time. He is more than one inning in 15 of his 40 games. Have to see it again here tonight. AJ Ellis at second. Skip Shoemaker at first. Juan Uribe is the batter. First pitch strike from Loop. You know, this is the one thing about the Blue Jays. They don't have a true long man in their bullpen a guy when the starter gets knocked out in the second or third inning who can give you four maybe five innings out of the bullpen and keep it right there when I say piece it together it's one two innings from the rest of the guys remember they're down one reliever out of that bullpen well they're down to the normal seven mm -hmm. they've had to carry eight because of the inconsistency they've gotten from the rotation one and one nobody out Line to second. Lori goes to first, but Shoemaker is back easily. That's the first out of the inning. They hit it hard, but right to the second baseman. 
First and second line drive in the middle infielder. What's your first thought? Triple play. But Schumacher gets back at first base. Really no chance to get him. He did a good job of reading that ball in the air. Number nine hitter Mark Ellis had a two strike base hit to right. Came around to score the fourth Dodger run. They have added a run here in the third. Andre Ethier with a leadoff double was cashed in by A.J. Ellis. Ball is driven in to right. Easy play for Bautista. The runners will hold their ground. Two down. Aaron Lope into the ball game in relief of Josh Johnson, the starter. Pitched an inning and two thirds yesterday for the Blue Jays against Tampa Bay. So you got to figure one, maybe two innings tonight for Lope. Hopefully, quick innings. Throw a lot of strikes. Maybe you get the Dodgers swinging early and you can get through three. Kyle Crawford takes one outside. Looked like it caught the strike zone, but Luke didn't get the call. Ball on the strike. Five nothing Dodgers. We have seven hits already. Blue Jays with three. Crawford protects the plate and dribbles it up the first baseline. You talk about how Carl Crawford likes hitting in this ballpark here. Third inning, third at bat already for Carl Crawford. Crawford's a career 304 hitter against the Blue Jays. And he's always been a nightmare for them on the bases. He has 53 career stolen bases against Toronto. Hits this off the glove of Luke. Reyes has no play. It'll be an infield hit for Carl Crawford. Crawford's second hit of the night. This ball's heading out into center field. If this ball is it knocked down by Aaron Loop, fires it over to Reyes, and he does the right thing. There was no play anywhere on the bases. Just pick it up, hand it back to the starting pitcher. Take your chances with Puig. Boy, there's that scouting report we got from the coaches that Puig is a little over anxious right now that yeah. ball was two feet off the plate I wouldn't even throw a strike wouldn't even throw him close to the strike zone he is in swing mode right now over anxious with the bases loaded and now he is deep in a hole 0 and 2 he's got a lot of movement when the pitcher is getting set to throw the ball home Oh and two, two outs. Three pitches and Puig strikes out there and CB steps on the plate to end the inning. The Dodgers leave the bases loaded. And they have a five-nothing lead. Top of the order for the Jays in the bottom of the third. It'll be Reyes, then Bautista, and Edwin in Carnacion.
Z-Tech, 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 Z-Tech,
stay on the bag at first, and the ball was beyond its reach. When they traded for Ramirez, they moved him over to third base. His natural position over there at shortstop, showing you some athleticism. Really pulled away with Encarnacion at the plate. And Encarnacion is going to get an infield single. Two hits for Encarnacion. Adam Lind has a single. Then singled up the middle his first time up. Continues to swing the bat well against left handed pitching. That's one area hitting wise. He's done a much better job this year. Get that front shoulder in there. And he's hit the ball the other way when he needs to. Rio has given up 10 home runs this season. The last eight have all been solo home runs. Now he's done a good job of minimizing the impact of the long ball. He's given up four home runs to lefty batters. Adrian Gonzalez got him in Los Angeles. Excuse me. Carlos Gonzalez. The, okay. The Rockies. Cargo. Ichiro took him deep at Yankee Stadium. And Chase Utley hit a pair at Dodger Stadium. Now that's saying something right there. A left-handed pitcher in Dodger Stadium getting hit twice by a left-handed batter. Three and one, two outs. High deep drive down the left side, but that's going to slice into the seats. Well, the Blue Jays need to get something going, get back in this game before they really lose side of the Dodgers. Dodgers already have a 5 nothing lead. They have out hit the Blue Jays 8 to 4 and we are just in the bottom of the third inning. Just having trouble stringing hits together over the last two weeks or so. Ryu misses with that free two pitch and Lind will take first. First walk issued by the Dodger left hander, and that will bring Melky Cabrera to the plate. So, a similar situation for Cabrera is back in the first inning. He came to the plate with Encarnacion at second, Lind at first, and grounded out to second base. And they kept the ball away from him. So, Melky should think about that. Think about fastball away, maybe ripping one up the alley in right center. And he gets a fastball inside. Yeah, he actually missed his spot. Yep. Ellis jumped out there. Base hit up the middle. Encarnacion around third. Here's the throw from Puig, and he airmails it all the way to the plate, but not in time. And the Jays are on the board. An RBI single by Melky Cabrera. His 30th rhythm. All with two outs. Blue Jays putting it together now. Fastball away. That's where he got him out last time. Melky on top of the plate a little bit more. Reaches out there. Hits it right between Ryu's legs. And Puig hard charging. We've heard about him overthrowing the cutoff man. And he's going for the out right here. High throw. And Ellis does a great job of going up there to catch it. Mark DeRosa single to left his first time up. Change up. Ryu's got a good one, and he dropped it on DeRosa to even the count of the ball on the strike. Fastball change-up combination to righties. Fastball breaking ball. Curveball to the lefties. DeRosa singled off of a fastball last time. So he's getting a steady diet of off-speed change-ups. Well, man, he is smart enough to know that if Ryu's going to change, he'll look off-speed pitch right here. Take a shot. Try to guess what the 
lefty that he's going to throw you an off speed pitch. Yeah, he's a smart hitter. Right? He goes up there and he's got a plan when he is in that batter's box. He missed with the changeup. Three and one. You don't have to sell out to the fastball. He has shown that he will throw a breaking pitch and or a change up any time. Three and one, two outs. High fastball and DeRosa swings and misses. It'll be a full count. Hobie Rasmus on deck. Full count, two outs. The runners will be off on the pitch. Lind at second. He drew a walk. Melky Cabrera had the RBI single to center. Five one Dodgers. There go the runners lined into right field. Shoemaker got a good break. He dropped the ball. Lynn comes in to score. Cabrera stops at third. Shoemaker dove, slid, had the ball in his glove, but he couldn't close the glove and the ball popped to the turf. And he was playing deep in the outfield. Playing very deep in the outfield and right field, and he came hard charging. Rick Honeycutt is out with the interpreter to talk to you. Hunjin Ryu. Watch, watch the angle one more time. 3 2 pitch. He's in right field. You can see how deep he is. Didn't see it initially off the bat. Came in. It looked like it was in his glove. He was going to make the catch, and it just popped out. There, hit the turf. Just can't squeeze that glove. To record the out. And that ball was going to slice back to his left as it was off the bat of the right handed hitter. Shoemaker making his third start in right field. Remember, Matt Kemp is out in the lineup. The regular right field would be Puig. Tonight he's in center. So Ryu with a short meeting with the pitching coach Rick Honeycutt. Colby Erasmus flying out to center in the second. Two runs in for the Blue Jays. Goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Over behind the Blue Jays dugout now to play. This is where they have had trouble. Stringing hits together. First two outs in the third inning. Then singles by Encarnacion. A walk. Cabrera single. DeRosa single. Right back in this game. Rasmus behind 0 and 2. Colby's been good overall with runners in scoring position, a 319 average, but it drops off to 188 with two outs. Maybe putting a little too much pressure on you with two outs, saying I gotta get a base hit right here. And you just have a good approach, and good things are going to happen to you. 0 2 pitch. Cut on and miss. Rasmus strikes out. Ryu gets out of it. Blue Jays leave a pair, but they scored two. They've cut into the Dodgers' lead. LA has a 5 2 lead.
Little League Canada. Moncton, New Brunswick, August 8th, 9th, and 10th at Kiwanis Park. That's the site, and the instructors include the Hall of Famer, Roberto Alomar, Homer Bush, Jesse Barfield, Juan Beniquez, and Dwayne Ward. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Now, Blue Jays got out the scoreboard. Now it's up to Aaron Hope to put up another zero. Adrian Gonzalez, followed by Hanley Ramirez and Andre Ethier. Meet of the order for L.A. Luke delivers a strike. Dodgers got off to a rough start this year, didn't they? I mean, they, they assembled this great team. It started last year with the trade that brought Gonzalez and Crawford and Punto and Beckett. Went out and got Granky this offseason. And high expectations, but it's taken a while for the Dodgers to put it all together, and right now they're rolling. Yeah, and they got everybody back. You know, they got Carl Crawford back. Quig came up for the minor leagues. Hanley Ramirez is healthy finally. They had Matt Kemp off the disabled list. Kemp had a shoulder injury. He was activated on Sunday to play against the Nationals. Then he sprained his ankle on a hard slide and on plate. Kemp, in his own words, says he doesn't expect it to be a long-term injury, and he's anxious to get back in the lineup, obviously. Yeah, he looked a little rusty, too, didn't he, coming off the... Yeah, real rusty. <laughs> DL. Yeah. I wish bombs. I could stay that rusty. <laughs> he homered in his first at bat. He was a triple shy of the cycle, and Don Mattingly says, we got our man back. Don Mattingly, what a job he has done with the Dodgers. He's in his third season as the Dodger manager. He's just the ninth manager since the franchise moved to L.A. He was the hitting coach that joined the ball club after the All-Star break in 2008. Full count. Gonzalez fouls it back. You forget what a storied career Mattingly's had. He played 14 years with the Yankees, of course. He was the MVP in 1985 of the American League when he had 35 home runs and drove in 145. Had over 2,100 career hits. And I wish, I wish he could have been part of that Yankee dynasty that started right after Donnie left him. Yep. Great player. Gonzalez with the leadoff walk. You could win a trip to Alcatraz. Look in specially marked cases of Sleeman. No purchase necessary. Legal drinking age required. First of three against the Dodgers here at Rogers Center. Hanley Ramirez, the cleanup hitter, has struck out and hit into a fielder's choice. Inside, it's 2-0. and oh. Aaron Seavey's going to go to the mound and have a short chat with Aaron Luke. Hanley Ramirez is a terrific player, obviously. Signed originally as a non-drafted player by the Boston Red Sox. He went to the Florida Marlins at the time for Josh Beckett, Mike Lowell, and a throw-in, Guillermo Mota. Throw-in. <laughs> what a great trade for the Red Sox. And it proved to be a good trade for the Marlins yeah, as well. It was a great trade for both organizations. They both got what they wanted. A young player for the Marlins and an established veteran pitcher and third baseman for Boston. Two and one. Hammered to left field, and that's going to get down and go up against the wall. Melky Cabrera plays it back to second base. Hanley Ramirez has a long double or long single off the wall. Cabrera keeps him to first. Boy, he hits the ball hard. Doesn't get cheated at the play. Watch this pitch. He recognizes it from loop and extent. Full extension. 
line drive with some top spin on it to left field. Andre Ethier has already hit a pair of doubles. Gonzalez on the single by Ramirez goes first to third. Nobody out. Ethier, two for two with two doubles. He scored twice. Eight straight years now for Andre Ethier with at least 20 doubles. Dodgers are threatening to get those two runs back. Ethier fouls off the off-speed pitch. Changeup, he was out in front of. Andre Ethier, we mentioned, was originally drafted and signed by the Athletics. Ethier against lefties this year, just a 238 average. Well, this is the time you need a strikeout. Strikeout, yeah. Or a pop-up. Something where that runner at third base can't advance. Blue Jays are playing the infield back. Still early and not just the fourth inning. They'll take the double play and give up a run. Ethier gets a piece of it. Loop's got not only a tough delivery for lefty hitters to pick up on, but he's got good movement on that fastball. And throw it inside or outside. Both sides of the plate. Lefty's hitting just 188 against Aaron this year. And he needs a punch out. Well, oh, Ethier really shortened up his stroke right there and spoiled a pretty good pitch. Got to do that with two strikes. We saw it yesterday with Luke Scott. Against Ari Dickey, I think it was a nine or a ten pitch at bat, where he was behind 0 and 2, and you could physically see him shorten up that swing, and he hit a two-run homer. Way outside. Full count. AJ Ellis on deck. He's had a big night already. Gonzalez with the leadoff walks at third. Ramirez single. He's at first. Ellis. Has homered and had an RBI single. Just in case, I'd be surprised if they're running here. Yeah, you don't need to strike him out, throw him out right now. Ramirez, when he was younger, was a 30 30 threat. Not running. Bouncing ball. Luke will go for two. Second for one. Back to first. Double play. Gonzalez comes in to score. The Blue Jays get the double play started by Aaron Luke. Got to know what to do with the ball when it's hit right back to you. Luke does the right thing. Right away he knew who was going to be covering second base on a comebacker and starts the 1-6-3 double play. They Pick up the two outs, but a run will score. As you mentioned, Blue Jays are just in the fourth inning. There's no reason to really try to cut that run off. If you get two, you take it. Yeah, you got to take it. You need outs right now. Got a couple of innings to get those runs back. Mm. Quickly, 0-2. Justin McGowan begins to loosen up for the Blue Jays. Aaron Loop came into the ball game with nobody out in the third. This is his second inning of work. I think the toughest call for John Gibbons at this point is just trying to manage your bullpen. You don't want to abuse anybody to the point where you don't have them for a couple of days. 
Who just cares? coming off the All-Star break. Everybody is relatively rested, so yeah. they're in pretty good shape. That they're, good. they're playing 20 straight days. Uh, you got to think about tomorrow and the next day and the road trip. Brown ball to short. Reyes quickly in first, and Lynn can't make the play. <laughs> and they're going to keep Ellis at first base as a fan reached over and grabbed the ball, but he wasn't going to have a chance to advance, and this ball is in the air. Just went off the glove of Lynn. Yep. Ball did appear to bounce over there like it was in the air, and Adam Lynn just missed it. Lynn is charged with an air. That's the third Blue Jay air of the night. And for a team that's trying to get their bullpen quick outs, Loop's got to throw a couple more pitches. Shoemaker bounces it to third. Long throw for DeRosa in time. The inning is over. The Dodgers add a run. They have taken a 6 2 lead. It'll be. The number eight hitter J.P. Aaron Sebia to start things off, followed by Brett Lorry, then back to the top of the order. The leadoff man, Jose Reyes. Fans that received free seat upgrade, courtesy of TD. You're enjoying a beautiful night here at Rogers Center. While over in the Jays community, Carmas, it's guests from Moreland's Community Services. They're enjoying this great ball game tonight. Welcome to Rogers Center. You're enjoying that Jays care community clubhouse tonight. We move to the bottom of the fourth. It's a 6-2 Dodger lead. Boy, Blue Jays have kicked it around tonight. They've committed an air in each of the last three innings. It'll be Aaron Sebia, Lori, and then back to the top of the order, Jose Reyes. Jin Ryu, seven and three for the season. This is his 19th start. His first season in the major leagues. He's 26 years old. He's from Incheon, South Korea. And CB checked his swing. It's three and one. Rated as the number one prospect in the Dodgers organization. This spring. This is a high deep drive down the right side. Shoemaker with a long run, but it's two, three rows back into the seats out of play. 
And it has been 12 days since he has thrown in a game. They wanted to give him a little extended break, I guess you could say, right around the All-Star game. Get him back to where he was earlier in the year. He's thrown a lot of innings. A lot of pitches, too. Yeah, and that's what you said earlier, the fact that he throws so many pitches, and they want to make sure that given the all-star break and the flexibility of setting up your rotation, they give him a bit of a break. Here in CBA fouls it back. When you look at Ryu's record in Korea, he had a couple of 200 innings seasons in 2006 and 2007. And they backed him off a bit. He didn't past 200 innings in any season and Aaron Sebia takes one right down the middle. Aaron Sebia strikes out. That's the third strikeout for Ryu. Right down the middle. <laughs> Fastball. And JP just can't pull the trigger. Brett Laurie he went after the first pitch in the second inning. Hit a hot shot to the shortstop. He had his choice ended the inning. Laurie has experience against Ryu. These two faced each other in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Brett was just a teenager then. They played Korea in the pool play prior to the medal round. And Ryu had a five hit shutout against Canada. He said he keeps the ball away from me and I'm going to be ready for him tonight. He's got a little bit of a history over four. Against Ryu. Two and one. Bounced in front of home. Ryu also pitched for. South Korea during the. WBC, the World Baseball Classic in 2009. It's kind of ironic. He made two relief appearances for Korea at Dodger Stadium. He faced Cuba and Japan in that final series. Lori takes the walk. That's the second walk issued by Ryu. And you can see Canada's top athletes like you've never seen them before. Sportsnet Magazine presents the beauty of sport. Visit sportsnet.ca slash the beauty of sport. It's on your newsstands now. Sportsnet Magazine, they do a great job of covering all the sports and give you an inside look at baseball. A lot of great writers involved with that magazine. Leadoff man, Jose Reyes, has grounded out in flight out. Dodgers paid a lot of money just to have the right to sign Ryu. Over $21 million for the posting right to his Korean ball club. That's just the winning bit, too. Yeah, that just gets you the right to negotiate. And then end up signing with the Dodgers for $36 million, a six year contract. Well, everybody knows that the Dodgers are. The New York Yankees of the National League. Reyes reaches for it. Ramirez to second. Ellis, boy, what a turn at second base. That was a double play, folks. And they got a speedy runner in Jose Reyes. Hanley Ramirez starts the double play. Mark Ellis turns it perfectly at second base. We'll go to the fifth, the 6 2 Dodger lead. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
pitch with five earned runs on seven hits. He walked the batter, struck down two. And two of those strikeouts came in the first four batters he faced. He got off a good start. And then Andre Ethier, one of his personal problems is had another big night tonight. Ethier with a pair of doubles. Yeah, got off to a great start. Let's take a look at that double play and watch Mark Ellis and Hanley Ramirez work. He charges the ball quickly. And watch how quickly Ellis gets rid of the ball. That's how you hang around the big leagues for as long as Mark Ellis has by playing great defense and doing the little things to help your team win. New pitcher for the Blue Jays is the right-hander Dustin McGowan appearing in his 13th game of the season. Aaron Loop goes two innings. First pitch breaking ball. Uribe hits it to short. Reyes. Strong throw. One down. That's what you need. One pitch, one out for McGowan. Got the great fastball. But he's also sinking it this year. The miles per hour is back for Dustin. He's 96 or 97. And a good slider. Aaron Loop goes two innings. Allows one run on a hit. He walked about her and struck out about her. The catcher, A.J. Ellis. Excuse me, Mark Ellis. The number nine hitter. I didn't think they had any chance of turning that double play against Jose Reyes. Yeah, not with Reyes running. It wasn't yeah. hit that sharply, but Mark Ellis turned it perfectly at second. They both worked beautifully. Hanley Ramirez charged that ball. He didn't lay back on it. Charged it, got the short hop, gave a good feed to Ellis, who came across the bag. Whenever that shortstop's going to flip you the ball or it's going to be a long throw, you got to come across the bag and cut down that throw. It's a lot quicker. And he got Reyes. Heck of a turn. Three and one to the number nine hitter. Top of the fifth inning, it's 6-2 L.A. They are coming off a three-game sweep of the Nationals. Mark Ellis with his second hit of the night. Got the count in his favor and took advantage of it. He is 2-4-3 so far. Tenth base hit by the Dodgers. They came in here swinging hot bats. We've talked about the Washington Nationals, how they took them out on the road. They scored nine runs yesterday. Dodgers have improved to fourth in the National League in batting average. In the first pitch strike to Carl Crawford. Yeah, they beat up on the Nationals so badly that Washington fired their hitting coach. Rick Eckstein got fired, and Rick Shue came in to replace him. I was just looking at that. They scored, what, five runs in three games against the Dodgers? Of course, Washington concerned about slipping further and further back in the NL East, they are two games under 507 back of the front running Atlanta Braves. 0 and 2 to Crawford. Breaking ball. Aaron Seavey keeps it close enough to keep Ellis at first. Yeah, you can imagine there's going to be a lot of shuffling. We mentioned Matt Garza was traded from the Cubs to the Texas Rangers. Cubs are trying to be brutally honest with themselves right now. Are we in it or are we out of it? And that is hard to do sometimes if you're a general manager. If you feel like your team is right there. Crawford reaches for it. McGowan throws wild at second and all hands are safe. That's the McGowan. Never really got set when he turned and threw to second. It was on the First base side of the bag, and Jose Reyes didn't have a chance to make a play on it. 
comebacker by Crawford. In that inside turn, you can see his feet. He just couldn't close up that front side because his feet, the way he turned, and McGowan says, mm. Well, this has been the bottom of the barrel in my mind. This yep. is a four-error game now. They've had wild pitches, and it's just been a sloppy game. This cutoff throws from the outfield. Yes, he weak. He struck out on three pitches his last time up, and none of them were close. He's pressing a bit right now, came into this ball game, just four for his previous 25. Had nine strikeouts yeah. in those 25 at bats. Bunch of strikeouts. Pitchers are starting to get a book on them. It's just into center field. Easy play for Rasmus. Waits on it, and that's the second out of the inning. So Adrian Gonzalez is up for the fourth time tonight. He has struck out, then walked twice. He scored a run in the fourth. Gonzalez, you have a tendency to link him to the San Diego Padres, and why not? He spent five seasons there. It's the first pitch. Hiroso waits on it, and Gonzalez is retired on one pitch. McGowan gets out of the fifth inning despite his own air. Blue Jays have committed four airs. They trail by four. July 26th, the Blue Jays will take on the Houston Astros. The game starts at 7.07 p.m. Come on down to Rogers Center early and check out the pregame festivities happening outside of Gate 10. You can win prizes, enjoy the live music, and there's a licensed area. Gates open at 4.30 p.m. So call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234 to pick up your tickets. You can always pick your tickets up by logging on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Jose Bautista will try to get things going against Ryu. Takes the first pitch outside. Bautista has grounded out twice. Bottom of the fifth inning. Plenty of time for the Blue Jays to get back in it. Well, they're making them work. Ryu. That's now 86 pitches here in the fifth inning. They're making them work. They're just not coming up with a clutch hit. That has been a concern. You can see Don Mattingly talking with his pitching coach Rick Honeycutt about where they go after Ryu. They've got a good bullpen as well. Yeah, deep, a lot of hard throwers. Bautista hits it into right field. Skip Shoemaker is there. One down here in the fifth. Ooh, 
roof is open and the sun going down, creating a beautiful sunset. And a good crowd on hand as the Dodgers come in. And a lot of hype around the Dodgers with Yasiel Puig and the Ramirez is back and they are making a run at the lead in the National League West. Yeah, we're seeing firsthand why they're getting some decent pitching and this team can hit the Dodgers. Edwin Encarnacion has two hits tonight. He scored the first Blue Jay run in the third. I continue to emphasize the fact that Ryu is pitching. You look where he's throwing those pitches. He's got a game plan. That's right back under the glove of the pitcher into center field. Encarnacion with a free hit night. He hit that through two defenders right there. It was swinging a hot one tonight. Ryu had the first shot at it, the pitcher. He didn't get a chance of that. Mark Ellis reaches down, can't come up with it. Edwin, three hits. He's been on base three times. Lind, who is at the plate now, has been on twice with a single and a walk. So they have solved Ryu. Yeah, this is the part of the lineup that got to him in the third inning. Melky Cabrera to follow Lynn. Good cut by Lynn, fouled back. Well, that's the way things have been gone going for the Blue Jays. I mean, that was a beautiful pitch for Lynn, and he had a good cut out. And you can see the frustration as he fouled yeah. it straight back over the screen. Yeah, sh shaking his head right there. He said, That was the pitch that I was hitting hard earlier in the year. Just missed it. Just got under it a little bit. Whenever you see a batter swing and foul a ball straight back, he's right on it. Bouncing ball. This could be two. Ellis Ramirez back to first to double play. The Dodgers have turned a pair of double plays the last two innings, and they're out of it. And here comes the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura. Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. Bay a game and a half behind those Boston Red Sox in Tampa Bay of course has won five in a row. 
Annie Ramirez goes after the first pitch from Dustin McGowan and fouls it back. Ramirez had a smash that one hopped the left field wall his last time up in the fourth inning and was held to a long single. Mark McGuire is in his first year as a hitting coach for this Dodger ball club, and he said when Hanley Ramirez came back, our spirits picked up. And McGuire said Ramirez was on a mission way back in spring training. He was focused and locked in. And then he hurt his thumb in the World Baseball Classic, went on the disabled list, came back off the DL. McGuire said he was swinging great, hit a home run in his first game, and then had a hamstring injury, missed a few more games. We saw him last year when he was with the Marlins and didn't look very good. Swinging at everything, had a lot of strikeouts, got traded to the Dodgers and didn't do much for him last year. You can see why he was going to be motivated to show that last year was a fluke. Yeah, and he's a terrific player, obviously. He is one of those multi talented players that can do a lot of things to help you win. From the shortstop position, play in that position with that offensive ability. Ramirez is 29 years old, obviously in the prime of his career. Coming into this season, a 298 hitter that has since moved up over the 300 mark for. His career batting average with some power too. There he is with the Marlin. Yeah, he's had home run seasons of 33, 29, 24. Wow. McGowan walks him to start the sixth. All-new completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Top of the sixth inning. Andy Ramirez with the leadoff walk. Andre Eath here. He's gone two for three so far. A pair of doubles. There goes Ramirez hit and run is on eight year drives it down the left side but that's going to slice into the seats. Pretty good idea right there by the Dodgers to push it. And Ethier picked the right side of the infield to try to shoot that ball. Jose Reyes was covering on the hit and run Tom Mattingly saying you know what four runs against this team in this ballpark is not enough. Yeah he's an American leaguer. He's yeah. been in the American League East his whole life as a player. He understands that leads can evaporate. That coach on the right is John Valentin. He too spent his career majority of the time with the Boston Red Sox. And he had a great combination there to work with. And Ramirez at first base and Ethier at the plate. Now Ramirez has great speed. This is just his 43rd game of the season. He has five steals and five attempts. Ball on the strike. I'm able to put it right back on here. Eight years, a very good contact bat. And put the ball in play. Not going. Way outside. Brett Cecil is loosening up. Remember, the Blue Jays had to go to their pin. In the third inning. So John Gibbons is really going to have to mix and match that bullpen. Two and one to Ethier, but first they'll check on Ramirez. Blue Jays think something's up right here. If you're going to hit and run on the first pitch, you might hit and run two and one here. Not a bad idea. Ramirez not running. There's a strike. Two and two. Out at the bottom of the zone, delivered by McGowan. 
Dustin McGowan came on in relief in the fifth inning. He gave up a single, committed an air, but was able to strand a pair of base runners. Lynn misses the ball and goes into right field. Ramirez is headed for third. It looked like Lynn had a shot at turning two and then went right under his glove into right. It's a base hit for Ethier, his third of the night. Blue Jays have had a rough time on defense the first time this year. They've committed four errors in a game. Last four innings. This is the first one. Colby Rasmus uncorks that long one. And then the catcher's interference, which is an A or two. And then Adam Lynn can't come up with this throw from Reyes. And then Dustin McGowan joins in by throwing that one away. That last one could have been an error. It looked like it was right at Adam, and he just didn't get the glove down. Blue Jays have had four, three error games. It's the first game they committed four errors. A.J. Ellis has been on base three times already. He's two for three. He reached on an air in the fourth. He was able to reach when Lynn couldn't take that low throw from Jose Reyes. Nobody out. Dodgers threatening in the sixth. Dumps one into center field. That's down safely for a hit. Ramirez jogs in. A.J. Ellis with his fourth ribby of the night. He's driven in four of the seven Dodger runs. You uh, said he's got a good eye at the plate. They try to go inside. He's short swing. Runner at third base, you got to figure out a way to get him in, and he does with that blooper in the center field. That'll be it for Dustin McGowan. and John Gibbons out to go back to his bullpen. Brett Cease, the lefty, will be the third reliever to work in this ball game, and we are just in the sixth inning. When we come back, it'll be Skip Shoemaker against Brett Cease, and the Dodgers have a 7-2 lead. Skip Shoemaker is the batter. He shows Bunt and Bunt's a foul. Good idea right there. Tom Mattingly saying seven is not enough. So if John Gibbons is going to bring in the left handed reliever to face the left handed batter, I'll just try and bunt the runners over. Play for a couple more runs. You can see Lynn and DeRosa, the corner infielders, way in. At third and first. This time he's swinging away and fouls it off. 
Matting they gave him. The ability to swing away and he fouled it off. He's now behind. Of course Cecil. Had a great first half to his season. Came back and. Pitched on. Friday night first game back against Tampa Bay. Faced just three batters had a walk a fly out and a single. Was charged with a run in that game. All stars they don't get much of a rest during the all star break. See so drove with his family from Baltimore to New York and then the festivities they take up Monday and Tuesday and then you. Get back to Toronto on Wednesday have half a day basically and then Thursday and then back into it. Yeah. There is no break. There's a base hit to center field. Andre Eth here is getting the stop sign. Shoemaker a two strike base hit. And the bases are loaded. Four straight reach for the Dodgers here in the sixth. Went with that spike curveball that's been so good for him this year. Just left that one up. And Schumacher sends it back through the middle. Now the infield, they have to come in. Can't afford to give up any more runs. Play's got to be at the plate. Looks like the middle is still going to play a double play depth. DeRosa as well at third. Lind is in at first base. Juan Uribe. Goes after the first pitch and he was hacking. Yeah, he is notorious first ball, fastball type of hitter. Blue Jays have let him off in these at bats with off speed pitches. Ground ball. Reyes will have to go to first. They can only get one out as Ethier comes in to score. That's the eighth Dodger on second run of the inning. Uribe will be credited with an RBI, his 29th of the season. You can see the middle of the infield back playing for the double play when the ball is hit softly. The only play for Reyes is over at first base. Dodgers get another run. Second and third one out. They all have to come in now. Mark Ellis. Takes a first pitch strike. Ellis is two for three so far. He's single to right field and single to left. He drives this one deep to center field. Rasmus is going to make the catch. Both runners are tagging. Ellis from third. Shoemaker slides in safely in third. Ellis scores two outs. The Dodgers now lead it nine to two. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Scott Feldman is pitching for the Orioles. Wade Davis got knocked out early. And there's another base hit. Carl Crawford drives in Shoemaker from third, and the route is on. It's 10 2. Dodgers. Three hits tonight for Carl Crawford. He's also been on through an error. Oh, he mentioned how Crawford loved hitting in this ballpark. He got his first big league hit right here at Rogers Center. And he picks up the 14th Dodger hit of the night. Quig goes after that first pitch. They look relaxed at the plate, don't they, the Dodgers? Yeah. Wow. They're confident right now. Confident. Playing with a lot of confidence offensively.
Four runs in the second, four runs here in the sixth. Ball on the strike to Puig. They have batted around in the second inning. Almost batted around in the third and now the sixth. They've also left nine runners on base tonight. We checked his swing as that ball was bounced off the plate. Two balls and a strike. Puig is just 22 years old. He signed last year after defecting from Cuba. And he was persistent. He had many attempts at defecting and he was in the Netherlands and got caught. One of his teammates escaped and eventually signed with the Cubs and because of that last attempt he was suspended from playing in Cuba. You know what I don't think he's done filling out either. He's got some more to more room to grow on there. I saw him for the first time today. I was standing in front of their dugout. He came out and I have flashbacks. Bo Jackson. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that about him. Are they really? Physically, he reminds you of Bo Jackson. Broad shoulders, big legs, just a physical presence. Week strikes out for a second time, but the Dodgers continue to have their way with the Blue Jays. They lead it 10 2 on 14 hits. when the Blue Jays take on the Houston Astros. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Mr. Sub Cooler Bag. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com and order your tickets. Or you can always stop by most popular plus locations and pick up your tickets for Mr. Sub Cooler Bag Day, Sunday, July 28th. Dodgers with a big lead. It's 10 to 2. Melky Cabrera followed by Mark DeRosa and Colby Erasmus here in the sixth. Hey. Han Jin Ryu, the 26 year old Korean pitcher for the Dodgers, has limited the Blue Jays to two runs on seven hits. We've just been notified of a scoring change back in the sixth inning. Adam Lind is charged with an air taking away the hit from Andre Ethier in the sixth inning. 
There's a base hit for Melky Cabrera. Boy, he sat back and waited on that slow breaking ball and just served it right up the middle. That's how you hit that breaking ball. Here's the play that you were just talking about, Buck. Uh, runner at first base. Andre Ethier hits it to Lynn. Just doesn't get the ball or the glove down. The ball goes underneath it. And they've changed what was a hit to an error. Five errors now for the Blue Jays. One in the last five innings. Yeah. And just a bad night defensively. Mark DeRosa. Two for two. He's got a pair of singles. He got the start at third base with Ryu on the mound. Rosa drives it to right. Shoemaker back on the warning track. Melky Cabrera was all the way toward second base. Has to retreat in a hurry. DeRosa's retired for the first time today. One out. Kobe Rasmus has flied out and struck out. Here he has a single on the first pitch. Melky Cabrera will stop at second. Two hits in the inning. I think the Blue Jays know that Ryu is going to come after him now with an eight run lead. He's going to be bumping fastballs in there. He's at the end of his night's work, up over 100 pitches now, so they're going up there swinging. Saw Rick Honeycutt on the phone to the Dodger bullpen. Not Mattingly is making that slow walk out to the mound. He's called for the bullpen. So Ryu will turn the baseball over with one out here in the sixth. He will five and a third. He has been charged with two runs on nine hits to this point. Both the base runners in this inning are his responsibility. Got a big support group here at Rogers Center. His first game against the Blue Jays. It's been a good one. Smooth spiced rum, McCarty. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Everything going the Dodger way tonight. Tonight's smooth move off the bat of Reyes. Watch the turf. Ramirez charges over to Ellis, who quickly finishes off the double play. Good tandem in the middle of the diamond for tonight's smooth move. The Dodgers have really been. Tightened up on defense since Hanley Ramirez has returned to the ball club coming off the deal. The veteran Mark Ellis at second does a great job turning to. Now the young right hander, Jose Dominguez, making just his ninth appearance in the major leagues, comes on in relief here in the sixth. Lively fastball. This guy's tough touching triple digits with regularity. Got great riding action on that fastball, a little bit of a slider and a changeup, but he's got the number one. Aaron Seavey goes after the first pitch. Hanley Ramirez to second, not in time. Good job by Rasmus, not taking anything for granted. He hustled into second with the slide. It's an infield hit for Aaron Seavey. And he got himself 
his teammate an infield single. Colby Rasmus, big lead over there at first base, hustling all the way. Beats the throw from Ramirez. You can see how far off he is with his secondary lead. San Jose Uribe, or Juan Uribe, calling for the ball at third. That might have been the easier play. One out, Brett Glory. Takes the strike. Jose Dominguez, just 22 years old. This is his first opportunity to work in the big leagues. Laurie hits one that's going by Uribe. He goes to second for one. That's all they'll get. Melky Cabrera comes in to score. Laurie picks up the RBI on the fielder's choice. Another heck of a play. Watch Uribe at the top of your screen. In between hop, you got to keep that glove down low. Time it. And he gets an out in the middle of the dime. A nice play by Uribe. Laurie's 16th RBI of the season. Top of the order, Jose Reyes will bat left-handed for the first time. The ball gets by A.J. Ellis, and here comes Rasmus in for score. I don't think Ellis got a glove on it, just appeared to hit the umpire's shin guard. Rasmus scored. Wow, pitch charge to Jose Dominguez. Holdry's oh, got a lively arm. Big fastball. But control problems. Uncorks that wild pitch right there. Blue Jays get a run and another runner in a scoring position. Two outs. Dominguez was signed by the Dodgers as a non-drafted free agent as a 16-year-old in 2007. It's interesting, but he was an unprotected player that could have been taken in the Rule 5 draft last December. This has popped up over near the Blue Jays' dugout. A.J. Ellis gets there, and the inning is over. It looks like Dominguez may have hurt himself. As he tried to come off the mound, he is in some pain as he hits towards the Dodger dugout. But the inning is over. Blue Jays get a pair. We'll go to the seven. It's 10 4 Dodgers. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of our Blue Jays baseball partnership. We head to the seventh inning. 
New pitcher for the Blue Jays will be the big right-hander, Steve Delabar. Fourth reliever of the night for the Blue Jays. Josh Johnson, two innings, Aaron Loop, two. McGowan, one, Cecil, one, and out. Steve Delabar, the all-star. 40th game, great numbers for Delabar. Adrian Gonzalez up to the plate for the fifth time tonight. Gonzalez has walked twice. He's also struck out and grounded out. 299 average for the season. Quite a collection of quality hitters in this ball game. Hanley Ramirez at the start of this game was batting 3017. He's 13th on the active list for batting average. The current active leader in the major leagues is Joe Maurer at 322-6. Hanley Ramirez, we mentioned, 3017. Adrian Gonzalez came into this game batting 294.4. He was 24th in active batting average. And then in the ballpark, you've got Matt Kemp, who's 28th. Jose Reyes is 29th. Carl Crawford is 30th. Andre Ethier is 33rd. All playing in this series. And that's their career batting average. Active batting average for their career. Melky Cabrera's on the list at 43. A lot so, of good hitters in this series. Uh, is there another Cabrera in the, on that list? Just wondering. Miguel Cabrera possibly. Yeah, he's a little bit higher. He's third. Miguel Cabrera, the start of play tonight, 327. 3207. He is third behind Albert Pujols, who is 3-2-0-9. And what do every one of those hitters that you were just talking about, what do they have in common as hitters? Luck? <laughs> no. <laughs> Talent, yes. Yeah, they use the whole field. They use the whole field. No question. Joe Bauer, Pujols, Cabrera, Ichiro, Todd Helton. Joey Votto, the Canadian, is sixth on the list. Joey Votto has a 316 career batting average. I'm sure Derek Jeter is somewhere in there. He's too, seventh. Isn't he? He's seventh. And now I got a question for you. Should Ryan Braun be considered now that he's been suspended? Is he active? He's inactive, so he's that's, not on the list anymore. Yeah, that's not active. No. Suspended for the rest of the season. Hanley Ramirez. Off the glove of DeRosa. And that's going to dribble out into left field. And Adrian Gonzalez takes up on it. Ramirez is headed for second, and he gets there. A hustle double for Hanley Ramirez, his second hit of the night. He's been on base the last three times to the plate. This ball is hit as hard as his other single, just out of the reach of Mark DeRosa. And when he slows it down, that allows the base runners to move up. That would have been a single to left field first and second because it landed in no man's land. Second and third, nobody out. Infield has to come in again. By the Dodgers told us that everything Ramirez hits is hit hard, and that's another example. Andre Eath here. Well, the Dodgers have come into this series. Swinging red hot bats. Talk to Davey Lopes, the first base coach, about this team. He said, Yesterday was the first time we really felt like we had everything together offensively. And they've hammered the Nationals. They hammered a pretty good pitcher, too, an all star pitcher. Jordan Zimmerman. Seven and, runs in the second inning. Yeah, and all of a sudden, this Dodger team looks like they're playing the way everybody expected. And Lopes said it's only been the last few weeks where everything is starting to come together for this team. 0-2. Ethier takes one down and in. They have bull rushed the National League West, haven't they? We talked about that in the opening. A month ago today, they were 12 games under 500. And now a half a game out of first place. Uh, it just goes to show you, you just have to keep plugging away. You can't give in to the schedule. You can't give in to your situation. You can't feel sorry for yourself. Nine and a half games out of first. And now they're just a half game behind Arizona. And how about in May? 
they were calling for Don Mattingly to be fired. Well, that was interesting because it was an article that was written by Ken Rosenthal about Mattingly was on the hot seat. Obviously, you can't ask for a better baseball guy than Don yeah. Mattingly. Heck, his name has got baseball in it. Donnie Baseball. He's in his third season as the Dodger manager, and he has got this team on the right track now. Delabar strikes out Ethier with that good splitter. It's the first out of the inning, and Delabar, boy, he's got the ability to get out of this situation with the strikeout. Yeah, with a couple of different pitches, fastball and that split. Look at that thing go straight down. JP here and CB is showing the home plate umpire that he caught that one. The infield continues to play in. AJ Ellis has had a big night at the plate. Three for four with a home run and four RBIs. Trying to add to that with that swing. There's a drive to right. Bautista plays it on the hop. Here comes the runner to the plate. The throw is not in time. Gonzalez scores. How about Ellis? A five RBI night. Four hits for the Dodger catcher. That is a new career high. A.J. Ellis. His career high was four. That at Colorado last August. Inside out swing. Good RBI man hitting sixth. How about Bautista? He's not shutting it down. He comes in, tries to make that play and get the runner at the plate. That was a heck of a play. That ball gets by most right fielders, but he played it on the short hop and still jumped to his feet to make the throw. Skip Shoemaker takes the pitch outside. It's 11 4. There's a drive to right. It's high and deep and gone. Skip Shoemaker, his first home run of the season. his first home run and you can see his teammates probably been ribbing him about not having a homer yet well he does now first pitch fastball in it look at that no stride that's all with his hands as he gets the barrel of the bat out in front three run home run that's back to back innings now with four runs for the Dodgers they're up by ten Blue Jays just haven't been able to avoid those big innings. Three, four run innings tonight. The second, the sixth, and the seventh. They are blowing by some of their high batting accomplishments this year. Coming to this game, they're high for the season in runs in a game was 10. Yeah. Most hits they're one hit away from that. They've had 17 hits in a game twice this year. Both coming in July. Yeah. Davey Lope was right. They're starting to put it all together offensively. Juan Uribe a third baseman. He hasn't joined the hit parade yet. He got hit by a pitch in the second and scored, but he has lined out and grounded out twice. Mm. And he is called out on a tough pitch on the inside corner. Second out of the inning. Second strikeout of the inning by Steve Delabar. Fastball in her half freezes. Uribe. 
Delabar came into this game among the American League relievers, fifth in strikeouts. Mark Ellis has had two hits. Sacrifice fly came in the sixth inning. This should end the inning. Ellis drives a high fly ball into the center. Rasmus makes the catch. The inning is over, but it's another four-run inning for L.A. Keyed by Skip Shoemaker's three-run home run, his first of the season. It's all Dodgers. Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. New pitcher for the Dodgers is the former Tampa Bay Ray, J.P. Howell. Howell is now 30 years old. He's in his eighth major league season. Came up with the Kansas City Royals in 2005 as a starter. Dodgers signed him as a free agent in the offseason. Jerry Hairston Jr. The journeyman is out in left field. Taking over for Carl Crawford. Blue Jays very familiar with J.P. Howell. Parts of six seasons with Tampa Bay. Fastball, overhand curveball. Veteran now in his seventh big league season. Howell's coming back from shoulder surgery a couple of years ago, May of 2010. He had shoulder surgery. Took him a while to get back, but he is 100% again. There's an off speed pitch. That's a foul ball called by the home plate umpire, Dan Bellino. Howell turns that ball over, and Jose hits it off the end of the bat. You can see it's starting fair. And then that bounce right at the end. That is the home plate umpire's call until it reaches third base. He was all over it. And Bellino came out from behind home plate, got a good angle on the ball, and called it once the third baseman had grabbed it. Blue Jays knew this was going to be a tough homestand. Tampa Bay in for three. Then the Dodgers for three more and wrapped up four game set against the Houston Astros. How about the two hottest teams in baseball right after the All-Star break. Rays played the Blue Jays tough and we knew that was going to be a, 
a tough series. Came in here and swept it, and Dodgers hotter than anybody. 21 and 5 in their last 26. It's curveball down and into Bautista. Well, you got to dig down deep in games like this. Edwin Encarnacion on deck. He's had a three hit night. He scored a run. This is popped up and playable on the right side of the infield. Second baseman Mark Ellis makes the catch. They mentioned Encarnacion with a three for three night. And this is how he got it done. First pitch from Ryu. He sees he hits a bullet in the left. Then up the middle, it's an infield single. And then under the glove of Ellis. So. Edwin very comfortable tonight against the left hander. He gets another one here in JP Howe. Fifth time this season he's had three hits in a ball game. He has yet to pick up a four hit game. He has faced Howe in the past, like we told you, a reliever. In the American League, he's faced him four times, hit a home run off of him. Two for four in their head to head matchups. That's way outside. It's two and them. This is the Blue Jays' 98th game of the season. Certainly a lot of game left. And you're going to have to regroup quickly. The strike right at the bottom of the zone. Yeah, as soon as the last out is made tonight, you got to forget about it. You got to start thinking about tomorrow. As soon as this one is over, you can't be thinking about, well, we've lost four in a row to start the second half of the season. What are we going to do? Just got to just keep battling them. Blue Jays have committed five errors tonight. First time they've. Made five errors since May of 2011 against the Rays. It's the 11th time in their history they've committed five errors. The club record is a six air game. It happened way back in 1982 against the Texas Rangers. Two and two to Encarnacion. Hit hard, but Uribe is there at third. Two down. Well, the Blue Jays saw Josh Johnson have an abbreviated start here tonight, and down in AAA, the news wasn't much better. Ricky Romero was the starter for the Buffalo Bisons. He goes one inning plus seven batters. Gave up four hits, four earned runs, and walked five. Had just one strikeout. Blue Jays were encouraged by his previous start when he went eight innings and allowed four hits and thought, okay, well, maybe he's trying to get Things sorted out, but he took a step backwards tonight. Jay Happ will pitch for Buffalo tomorrow night in his first Triple A start in his rehab assignment. <laughs> Starting pitching has been a problem for the Blue Jays. They have just 24 wins from their starters all season long. It begins and ends right there with the starting pitching the ERA from their starters also 14th in the American League. Only the Miami Marlins have fewer wins than the Blue Jays in Major League Baseball. Miami has 20 wins from their starters. The flip side of that St. Louis Cardinals the start of play tonight had 50 wins from their starting pitchers. And Blue Jays made every attempt to shore up their starting staff in the offseason. Adding Josh Johnson, Mark Burley, Ari Dickey, Miss Neil Rogers has been moved into the starting rotation. 
They had Jay Happ for a full season. Brandon Morrow hurt again. I mean, it looked looked wonderful, but it just hasn't happened for them. Well, and you look at the Dodgers; they were in a similar situation when they went to spring training. They had eight, maybe even nine starters, and they made a few trades. And then Zach Greinke broke his collarbone in the fight with San Diego. Ted Lilly hasn't been right this year. Saw him. There he is. There's Ted, former Blue Jay. Breaking ball inside. Ted Lilly, Zach Greinke, Chris Capuano to Greinke's right to make the start tomorrow night. Ricky Nolasco, who was acquired by the Dodgers from the Miami Marlins, will start on Wednesday night. Full count, two outs. Lynn bounces it towards second. Mark Ellis has it. J.P. Howell has an easy inning in the seventh. Darren Oliver comes out of the bullpen to work the eight. Grand Slam combo ticket includes a hot dog, nachos, popcorn, peanuts, and apple chips, and the soft drink. All this for only $39. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com. Or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Thursday, July 25th, the Grand Slam combo. Dan Oliver will be the fourth reliever to work tonight for the Jays. He's on in relief. Uh, Steve Delabar, actually, it's the fifth reliever. It's been Luke McGowan, Cecil Delabar, and now Oliver. There are the numbers for the left hander. Right, he's hitting a buck 69. Three innings away from 1900. Jerry Hairston Jr. hitting for the first time. Flies out to center, one down. The all-new completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Back here at Rogers Center, this is the first of a three-game series between the Blue Jays and the Dodgers. And a good crowd on him. There's been a lot of Dodger fans in attendance. Loud, too. Loving the Dodgers. Yasiel Puig playing in center field in place of Matt Kemp, who's got a bad ankle, injured in a slide at home plate against the Nationals yesterday afternoon. Puig signed a free agent contract with the Dodgers at a tryout in Mexico. 
and that ball hit him. He'll go to first base. Looked like a breaking ball that bounced up and hit him on the leg. But Puig signed a seven-year, $42 million contract as a free agent with the Dodgers and quickly made his way through the minor leagues. He burst on the scene, didn't he, this spring? Every day you pick up the newspaper and you see this guy's got two, three more hits and a bunch of home runs. He had 44 hits in his first month in the major leagues. Only Joe DiMaggio had more hits in his first big league month than Yasiel Puig. And he was doing it with multi-hit performances. Look at the numbers he was putting up. He had 18 multi-hit games in his first 41 games. This is his 42nd big league game. Extra base hits, too. I mean, they weren't any cheap hits. Eight home runs, and now he's got 20 RBIs. And he's just 22, just really learning how to play here in the big leagues. Ball in the strike. Adrian Gonzalez gets jammed. Rajay Davis in defensively for Bautista makes the catch. Thirty-four thousand five hundred and fifteen for the Dodgers. One thing you can't fault the fans. They have been out in big numbers supporting this ball club. They had a great turnout over the weekend. Forty-one thousand on Sunday. Forty-two thousand on Saturday. Hanley Ramirez hits another bullet. But right to the third baseman Mark Carosa. It's 14 to 4. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Way back in the second inning, this is the hit that got the Dodgers going right here. AJ Ellis with home run number five after a double by Ethier. Two run home run by Ellis. They will go on to add 12 more runs to take that 10 run lead. Tonight's drive of the game. Melky Cabrera facing J.P. Howe. Howe retired to side in order in the seventh. His first inning of work tonight. Melky is two for three with an RBI. He's also a scorer. run. Bounce to third. Uribe is there. Takes his time. That's the first out of the bottom of the eighth. J.P. Howe, four batters, three ground ball outs. He turns his fastball over to the right-handed batters, and they're just hitting it into the ground now. J.P. Howe really had a great stretch last year. 
pitching for Tampa Bay 27 and a third scoreless streak that was the second longest by a reliever in the American League last year Ernesto Fieri of the Angels had a 28 and a third scoreless stretch Mark DeRosa drives this down the right field line this is trouble it's a fair ball DeRosa will end up at second base as the fan reached over and grabbed the baseball the Rosas had a three hit night well, he can hit the ball where it's pitched turns that ball over again but Mark DeRosa inside out swing down into the corner watch the fan interference that's a double you can start to jog to second base now for DeRosa his eighth double of the season Rages average 16 points with three hits. Kobe Rasmus singled his last time up. Drives this ball to right. Schumacher is not going to make the play. Plays it on a hop. DeRosa comes around to score. Rasmus has an RBI single. Rasmus is going to take this inside pitch and hit it to right field. Schumacher, who plays some infield, backs up on this ball. Rasmus has the single, the RBI. 14-5. Blue Jays have 12 hits, but I don't think too many players in that dugout are feeling good about that. J.P. Aaron Seavey had an infield hit his last time up. He's also struck out twice. He drives this one deep into right center. Puig on the run at the wall. Makes a catch. Oh, what a catch by Puig. And he gets up and fires it all the way back to the infield. There's the athleticism you see from Puig. He slams into walls. He's not afraid of any fence. He did this in Colorado and injured his hip when he crashed into the fence. Look at the determined effort by Puig. Never took his eye off the ball. His team is up by nine runs, and he was very determined to make this catch. Takes the brunt of that with that left shoulder, then comes up and heaves one all the way into the infield. Well, Don Mattingly has to be concerned. Now he wants Gonzalez to play behind the runner at first. Gonzalez is trying to get Howell's attention. Now he moves behind Rasmus. But Puig, I mean, he sees the ball in the air. He thinks he can catch it. I don't care what the score is or what the situation is. Yeah. I mean, that. what a way to play the game. That glory waves at that breaking ball. You got to love that. I mean, he said, as soon as that ball was hit, I'm going to make this catch. He didn't give in to the fence and slow down. He went, I think, faster those last couple of steps to be sure he made the catch. Well, he can really run. Got a good jump and just made up his mind he was going to catch it. Two outs now. 1-1 one, one count on Brent Lurie. Two and one. Lurie's been on base three times and I reached on two fielders' choices and also walked. The Dodgers are really kind of keeping a close eye on Quig. He is literally learning the game in the major leagues. He just hasn't had much experience. <laughs> Davey Lopes, the first base coach, is also working with him in the outfield. And he's, he's just trying to explain situations. There are times to gamble, times to lay back, and he hasn't figured out the word lay back yet no <laughs> <laughs> but Lopes really admires his effort he said he's a quick learner they have seen dramatic improvement in his ability to make throws and quality throws and on the bases running the bases with much better judgment perfect example of an athlete who you could teach how to play the game of base baseball 
Davey Lopes told me if he ever really gets it figured out, he's going to be something very special. Full count, two outs. Rasmus at first is off on the pitch. Laurie gets a piece of it and stays alive. It's 14 to 5 as Blue Jays bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. This one got out of hand early. Dodgers scored four runs in the top of the second. Keyed by an A.J. Ellis two-run homer. Lori swings and misses. He strikes out. The inning is over. Blue Jays get a run. They're denied possibly another run on a great defensive play by the young center fielder. Yasiel Puig takes extra bases away from J.P. Erencedia. John Gibbons has had to unload his bullpen tonight. Casey Jansen is the sixth reliever to work. He is making his 34th appearance. Getting a chance to pitch. Last time Jansen pitched was just two days ago. Against Tampa Bay. An inning, a hit, a couple of strikeouts for Casey. That's a problem when you don't have a long man and your starter gets knocked out early. A guy who could throw you four or five innings. And tonight you got to go one in with everybody. Aaron Luke, the only reliever to go two innings. He came out of the shoot first in relief of Josh Johnson. He went two innings. He threw 37 pitches in the two innings. Andre Ethier couldn't check his swing. Jansen is ahead one and two. Ethier stays alive. He got a piece of that breaking ball. You mentioned Ethier, what a good hitter he is. And he was part of that group of the top hitters with active batting average. Ethier, at the start of play, a 287 hitter. 2 2 pitch off the plate inside. Yeah, how about the rumors of him being traded earlier this year? It's crazy. Hey, it's Hollywood. Okay. They start rumors about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just signed him to a big contract. No thing. Next thing you know, you hear him being traded to the Yankees and here and there. I can hit. Mm -hmm. 
Eight years called out on that borderline pitch, and obviously at this point of the ball game, he's not going to beef too much. AJ Ellis will come to the plate, and he's had a big night. Got it going for the Dodgers. This is the second inning, home run number five to center field. He would get a base hit up the middle and get off to an error. Here's another hit. He scored three runs, four knots, a career high in RBIs with five. Career high in hits with four, his first four hit game of his career. He has scored three runs. First time in his career he's scored three runs. One and one to the Dodger catcher. And he's a, added 11 points to his batting average tonight. That's hard to do in July. In July, pick up that many points in one night. Hazy Jansen gets him to chase that cut fastball off the plate. Yeah, you're right. Anytime you get this deep into the season, your average doesn't fluctuate an awful lot. When you have this many at bats, AJ Ellis, 230 at bats, and he got a big bump. Lays off that high pitch. Off the glove of Jansen, but Lori stays with it, makes a good play to retire AJ Ellis. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Tampa Bay has won six straight, and they've done it on the strength of their starting pitcher. We saw Chris Archer and was David Price. Uh, they got a deep rotation. And when you look at the Tampa Bay Rays, that's their 44th win by a starting pitcher this year. That's the third most in the majors behind St. Louis and Detroit. What a great problem to have. Yeah. Uh, we got Alex Cobb. He's going to go down and make a, a rehab start tomorrow. He might be back in a couple of weeks. Well, they certainly don't have to rush him. Not the way they are pitching right now. Just sets up your whole team, your bullpen, everything. Skip Schumacher, the right fielder, has an interesting night. He reached on catcher's interference in the third. Singleton scored in the sixth and a three-run home run in the seventh. His first home run of the season. Starting in right field with Matt Kemp out of the lineup with an ankle injury. Puig moved from right to center. And Schumacher got the start in right. This time he strikes up. Casey Jansen has a clean inning in the ninth. A couple of strikeouts will go to the bottom of the ninth.
Live audio, follow games pitch by pitch, and enjoy in-game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry Z10. Season-long subscription packages are available. Visit BlueJays.com. FAP 13 is the official app of Major League Baseball. New pitcher for the Dodgers is Chris Winthrow. His eighth appearance of the season, another hard-throwing Young pitcher, just 24 years old, out of the bullpen for L.A. Made his Major League debut on June the 12th. That was against Arizona. Pitched three games and was sent back down. Now back into the big leagues. You're right. He's the Dodgers' number one pick in 2007. He's got a good fastball. He's touched 98 in the past with some good sinking action on it. Keep it down in the strike zone. Drops a nice little curveball in there. So... Changes all over the place for the Dodgers now. Tim Fedorovic, the backup catcher, taking over defensively at first base. Emilio Bonifacio will come off the bench and bat for Jose Reyes. Bonifacio hasn't had an opportunity to play much of late, so he'll get an at bat against the right hander with throw. Blue Jays were really never in the game tonight. Dodgers scored four in the second and a run in the third. It was five nothing for the Blue Jays. Got on the board. Bonifacio drives it to left. That's down and safely aboard is Bonifacio. He gets a single to start the inning. Now time for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed, the Bronco Osman. Rajay Davis entered the ball game as a defensive replacement for Jose Bautista. He'll bat for the first time. Nobody's holding Bonifacio's on. He's not going anywhere, obviously. It's 14 to 5, Dodgers. For the Dodgers, they've set a new high and runs scored with 14 runs. Their previous high was 10. They did that twice, and we mentioned how hot they have been in July. All three of their top run games have come in the month of July. Just looked so comfortable at the play. Josh Johnson went through him quickly in the first inning. Struck out Ramirez to start the second inning and then got knocked out at the beginning of the third inning. And that's when the Dodgers really poured it on. The Dodgers scored four runs in three different innings. The second, the sixth, and the seventh. One and two to Rajay Davis. Here it is right there. Blue Jays helping him out. Five errors. Five straight innings with at least one error. Davis drives this into right field. Schumacher calling for it. Schumacher makes the catch. We runs into him. And remember, Puig is making just his second start in center field. Schumacher got over and called for it. It was an easy play for him, and he's trying to get Puig's attention by raising his arm up. Yeah, you don't want to get run over by that guy in center field. He's 240 pounds, 6'3", 240. From a right-handed bat, that ball's going to slice right back to the right fielder. Josh Tolley will get a pinch hit at bat, batting for Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin went three for four tonight. A 
There's a ball and a strike. The starter for L.A., Hunjin Ryu, is in line for his eighth win. It'll be eight wins against three losses for Ryu. Gave up four runs on nine hits in five and a third, but it was staked to an early, healthy lead. Made life a little bit easier with that, didn't it? When you got that many runs to work with early. I think Chiu, he just made up his mind he was going to pound the strike zone. He walked two, struck out three in his five and a third. Tolly with a 2 2 count. Steps out of the box. Strikes out on that high fastball. 97 miles an hour from Chris Withrow. Compensation from the Red Sox for losing Julio Lugo. How's that for a nice baseball move? You get a, an arm like this. You get that extra first round pick from losing a player like Julio Lugo. You use it to pick a young arm like that. Well, we just got some. Disturbing news. Jason Grilly of the Pirates left the ball game with an apparent arm injury. Of course, the Pirates closer was leading the majors in saves. They get more on Jason Grilly on Connected. It'll be right after this ball game. Ken Reed and Ivanka Osmak will bring you up to date on everything around the sports world. Adam Lynn behind Owen Chu. That'd be a huge blow to the Pirates, oh. wouldn't it? Sure 30 would be. saves? I think really got his 30th save the other day. Lawson and Grilly have been perfect this year for the Pirates. 30 saves ahead of Mojica of the Cardinals and Kimbrel of the Braves. Time to burn up the phone lines. Wow, that's a tough one. Melanson and Grilly had been the one-two punch, eighth and ninth inning, both throwing great. Yeah. Build up that record that the Pirates have put together, and, and that's the reason why you and I think that they weren't going to falter in the second half because their bullpen was much deeper this year. Now, when you look at their record now, they're two games back of the Cardinals. They've lost six of their last ten, and fouls it back. They play great at home, 32 and 18. But not many clubs can handle the loss of their closer. Boston's been able to do it. Yeah, two of them. They lost their closer, former Pirate Joel Hanrahan. Now Andrew Bailey is on the disabled list. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Lind has a single in three at bats. He's also walked. Withrow is the fourth Dodger pitcher to work tonight. The starter Ryu. Jose Dominguez, JP Howell, and now Chris Withrow. Another choo choo pitch. Then strikes out. The game is over. The Dodgers win the opener 14 to 5 on a Season high 14 runs. Ryu picks up his eighth win of the season. We'll be back tomorrow night. Game two of this three game set. Too much offense for the Blue Jays tonight. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Connected. Coming right up.